Hi folks, hope you guys are well today. I wanted to take today's video to show you the accumulate distribute algo in TWS from Interactive Brokers. This is an interesting tool. Now there's a couple of guidelines on the tool and I will link them in the description. There's one video that Interactive Brokers made themselves. You should check that out first of all. And in this video, I'm just gonna basically try to explain to you what the tool is and how you can potentially use it for your own benefit in trading. So this tool, is essentially a tool that you can use to either buy or sell a financial instrument. So it applies to stock, futures, forex, and options, and that's it. So first of all, how do we get the tool? Well, you're gonna to wanna to bring up a TWS window. There's a couple of ways you can get it. If you're in a mosaic TWS, you can go to new window and then go and find it under more advanced tools. And you're gonna find it there at the top, accumulate, distribute. Another way you can do it is if you already have a quote monitor, you can simply right click on one of your instruments, then go to trading tools and you'll see accumulate, distribute there along with a few other tools that TWS has. So let's focus on accumulate distribute in this video. So this is the window that we're gonna be doing most of the work in. I wanna break it down for you so that it's not as complex as it looks. So in the first part of this window, we have everything up until here where it says conditions. So I would consider everything up until conditions, the first section of this order, okay? What this accumulate distribute algo essentially is designed for according to IB, it's designed for traders that need to fill larger orders and want to conceal their size from the market. But apart from that, it can also be used to attach multiple conditions to your order and your order will work based on the conditions you provide so if you look briefly at this window you can see here that these conditions can be applied so you can set conditions based on the price based on news based on your position size and based on moving averages for the contract and moving averages for other contracts so guys and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below leave a like on the video cheers so let's say we want to create a buy order you can only choose buy or sell you need to know the total amount of shares that you're going to be purchasing or selling in the order and then you need to select an increment the shortest increment you can select is seconds so let's say you want to buy 5,000 shares in increments of 250 every 10 seconds that it hits the market fine so this is your order and you're splitting up a 5,000 share order into 250 now now this might apply if you're trading a less liquid market in this video I'm not going to be focusing on trading strategies I'm just going to focus on breaking down this tool for you so that you can potentially apply your own creative thought to it so see if you can use it towards a system that you're working on so again this up here is basically going to be used to break apart larger orders into smaller sizes now I noticed that IB does this automatically so if you submit a large order it's not going to fill the whole order at once but the thing is when you submit a large order you're showing your hand to the market right away and for a large trader that might not necessarily be what they want to do so in this case it gives you the option to split up the order into smaller pieces Fine, the next thing is the order type. Now, there's a few order types we have at our selection. One of the best ones is the relative order because relative is a liquidity providing order. And what it does is essentially the same thing as a limit order, except that it seeks a more aggressive fill. So if it's a buy, you're seeking a fill slightly higher than the bid. And if it's a sell, you're willing to accept a lower fill than your limit price. And that's gonna be determined by your offset. So in this case, if I set this to buy as a rail order, it's going to ask you set the order price to bid plus the amount of offset. So essentially this would be the offset for this relative order. And you can also set a price cap. So let's say you're submitting a buy order, but you don't want higher than a certain price. That's where you can use that. And you can also set this to many other options, including moving averages relative to position or last trade or VWAP. So you can kind of see how this can get a little bit complex. And again, the goal with this video, I'm trying to show you the tools in a way where you can kind of spark your creative juices and say, okay, how can I apply this? Now, none of it on its own is going to help your approach. So that's why you need to know what you're trying to do first and then you can potentially use this to fulfill that purpose. So everything relating to your original order is specified in this top menu right here. Let's continue here. We can specify our start and end time if you like. And then these few check boxes here are going to be important depending on the size of the order and the kind of trade that it actually is. So 
You can see here, wait for current order to fill before next size increases. I'm gonna provide the link for this. There's a link on IB's website about this and they specify each one of those check boxes as to what they do exactly. And you're gonna see here right here, wait for current order to fill and you can see if checked, the next component will be held until the current quantity fills, the countdown until the time of next order stops while the algo waits for the current order to fill. Once it fills, the next order is submitted if, if the specified time interval has elapsed. You're gonna use this menu to know exactly what these checkboxes do and they might be relevant to your trade or not. If you're trading a large order and you wanna conceal your size from the market, you're gonna probably use these randomized size by plus or minus 55%. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna split up your order in a way where you're not really showing your hand to the market. That's gonna benefit traders who are looking to fill large orders. You can also randomize the time period. This is an interesting checkbox. Take entire offer up to number of shares remaining if the offer size is X or higher and the price is X or better. So this is quite interesting. It can be quite specific. Let's say you're looking to be a buyer at a certain price and you are looking to buy a large amount of shares. If there is an offer available in the market that meets your amount of shares that you're willing to buy, you can check this box to take that offer and the algo will automatically work to take that offer. Let's move on here and we'll talk about order conditions. So the next section in the accumulate distribute tool is about order conditions. And you can see here that these are the conditions that we're allowed to use. You can choose for the order to give up permanently if one of the conditions becomes false and the opposite would be resume the order if the conditions become true again. So that's it. The next condition would be specifying a price range. The next condition would be submitted shares not to exceed a certain percent of the trading volume since the algo started. Again, that's very specific. You can also specify if there was news in the last X amount of minutes. The last two conditions are related to your position size and the moving averages for the contract. So I want to give you an example of a hedging approach just to get the juices flowing. I'll give the example of a trader who is not necessarily at the desk all day and they have a specified options position on on both sides of the market and they know that they need to hedge themselves by buying or selling the underlying security if the price reaches a certain point and maintains a certain point. You're going to use these conditions to make these orders work or not. Let's create a scenario where this trader needs to buy 5,000 shares of this stock if the price trades higher than 280. So what you're going to do first of all is create a price condition where once 280 is achieved, the order will start to work. And then of course the higher number in that case won't matter as much. In this case, the trader knows how many shares he needs to buy in order to hedge his options position. In this case, it's 5,000 shares. His position size, what we're going to use this for, and I'll show you real quick. So for a buy order, you need to set this to position is less than the maximum position size. Now, the reason this is important is because let's say our trader, he's not at the desk all day, but he's got multiple instances of accumulate distribute programmed to hedge his positions if the stock trades out of his specified range. So what he knows is that his maximum hedging size in this case is going to be 5,000 shares. So the algorithm will not be working unless his position is less than 5,000 shares. An even better way of using this would be to set up to accumulate distribute algos with the equivalent settings. Okay, so bear with me this. I'm gonna try and explain to you this. And if you don't understand it, no problem. Just repeat the video. Let's assume the trader has multiple instances of accumulate distribute programmed in the market. He's got two of them equivalent on the buy side because in case one of them stops working, he needs the other one to kick in. And he's got two of them equivalent on the sell side of the market to hedge his position or to sell his hedge that he put on earlier. And again, this is gonna be relative. I'm just creating an example here. So let's assume he's got four accumulate distribute orders working at the same time, each of them with price and position conditions associated with them. That is why we need to use the position condition to specify what our maximum size is for our hedging position. That's why it's highly beneficial to have these conditions here attached to these orders. The next condition is related to moving averages. So if you wanna be even more specific, this is an example that you can create. If the last price is at least 
0.1% greater than its five minute exponential moving average, then you want this order to continue working. And the selections for each of these appear when you click on the boxes. So you can basically choose exponential moving average, simple moving average or moving VWAP or the last price. Last but not least, we have more moving average parameters that you can use to set up for other symbols. Something I could think about is let's say you're trading on the indices, you're looking to buy the indices if the biggest holdings of the indices are above their exponential moving average, for example. So as you can probably see, this tool can be used to execute sophisticated trading ideas and strategies. It should be understood as exactly what it is, which is a tool. It's up to you now to look at the tool and see if it applies to what you do and think about in great detail what it is that you are trying to accomplish with your trade and see if this tool is able to provide you what it is you're trying to accomplish. That is it. It's a tool. And if you can use it, great. All right, guys, so in this video, we covered the Accumulate Distribute Algo. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.